Hey everybody, I'm Tony George from DocSports.com. The continuing series of college football season win totals as the season is bearing down upon us as we speak. And we're going to talk about uh, my alma mater, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Season win total is at six and a half. You know, uh, I spent 35 years of my life in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, my heart is still in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, both my children were born in Lincoln, Nebraska, Bryan Memorial Hospital, and out of the birthing canal into the nursery within 20 minutes of being born, both of them had a Nebraska stocking cap on in the nursery. As you stand there and look through the glass and realize the chore in front of you, nonetheless, uh, you're literally born a Husker. But it has been a rough ride since the days of Tom Osborne in the 1990s and the domination that Nebraska had. Uh, bottom line here is um, Tom Osborne's gone. They fired Frank Solich, who went on to become a legend at Ohio University after a 10-win season and a Orange Bowl national or Rose Bowl national title appearance with Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch. The AD at the time, Steve Peterson, who was the biggest idiot on the planet, fired him. And uh, since then, it's just been one of the biggest dumpster fires in college football. Bar none. I mean, I think it's one of the steepest falls from grace uh, for a blue blood type program like Nebraska or any other program like Tab that uh, in recent history. And last year, with culmination of firing Scott Frost, who was going to be the savior, uh, I think four or five games into the season, um, just – absolute train wreck so now nebraska brings in matt rule who turned around temple who turned around baylor who then subsequently went to the nfl and the raw raw college stuff didn't work very well in the nfl a lot of great college coaches go to the nfl and fall flat on their butt he was one of them very few make it can he turn around nebraska well, if anybody can, he can. And they're paying him a bunch of money to do that. A bunch of money. That being said, for all the Nebraska fans out there, bear in mind at Temple and Baylor. The teams, he, and by the way, when he took over Baylor, Art Bryles had ran that thing into the ground. NCAA violations, just an absolute train wreck there in in uh, Waco, Texas, and for him to be able to turn that around in a conference with the Big 12 with the likes of Texas and Oklahoma and, you know, Oklahoma State, and, you know, TCU. I mean, there, there's a lot of good teams in that conference when he turned them around and got them to, you know, prominence. Uh, but bear in mind, those two programs the first year, their records combined – when he took over, were 3-23. and 23. Now, when you look at Nebraska this year, what was the biggest problem under Scott Frost besides it? no discipline? No player development. They just stayed a four or five win team. Continue to have turnovers. Continue to have penalties. Continue to have special teams blunders at the most crucial moments in games, and that's coaching. So that's been removed from the equation. Okay, somewhat, but now you've got an entirely new system. You have a defensive line that was decimated with graduation, an offensive line that was ranked 108th out of 136. And when you look at preseason um, prognostication, uh, you go to a couple of reliable sources. Here's one. I've been telling you about this, this preseason publication. You all know this one, you know couple of the Bibles, guess what? On the first and second all-conference teams in both those publications, including special teamers, not a single Nebraska player shows up on any of them. That is a tall chore. You're opening up with two road games. Your win total is six and a half. You know, you need six wins to get the bowl game. When's Nebraska, the last time they've been in a bowl game, what, eight, nine years ago? If I could even recall that. 
They've been to what, 32 or 33 in a row before that? And then the wheels came off? The wheels aren't going to come back on right away. Now, they brought in Jeff Sims from Georgia Tech at quarterback. Dual threat guy, 4-4 speed, make a lot of things happen. Casey Thompson, the starter last year, left uh, in the transfer portal and went to Florida Atlantic. But at the end of the day, you know, you've got, a re- you've got an offensive line that's not any good. you got to rebuild. You have a defensive line you got to rebuild. You're going to go to a 3-3-5 scheme on defense, which means you're going to have five DBs on the field. Because they don't have the size, they're going to replace size for speed. They do have that. They got a great combination, a one-two punch at tight end, including a transfer portal guy out of Georgia who's really good. Uh, Running back, they got three good running backs. But the power football with weakness up front, the bread and butter of a Matt Rule team is not going to be there year one. You know, uh, they don't have to play Ohio State, but, you know, you've got Michigan this year. You've got road games at Michigan State and Illinois. You've got, you know, you open up at Minnesota. About one of the better games they played last year was against As a matter of fact, if you look at a game grader, um, publications that grade games, like that was their highest graded game last year was against Minnesota. But you're opening up at Minnesota, and I know P.J. Flex had a few issues, uh, locker room issues, and some bad press up there, but they'll be ready to play. Then you got to go play at Colorado and Neon Dion primetime and that whole thing he's trying to do up there. And Nebraska's laying like eight or nine points on the on the futures market right now for that game. You're going to lay nine points with Nebraska on the road the second game of the season with what's been going on there? Matt Rule needs time. He had a great recruiting class. They they hired him later, you know, than they should have, but they did an extensive search. But for the time he had to get on the recruiting trail and get the recruiting class that he had was phenomenal. They had a great recruiting class, and they did fairly well in the transfer portal. However, all that into a new system and a new philosophy and a this, that, and the other – you know, I know the Nebraska faithful will be out there strong. They've sold out every home game since 1962. You know, they're behind them, but it's going to take a while. You need to manage your expectations if you're a Husker. The Big Ten is not a conference that's easy to rebuild in and win seven, eight, or nine games. You know, even with a very weak. I mean, at Minnesota, at Colorado, then a game at Northern Illinois, or with Northern Illinois and with uh, Louisiana Tech. Um, so potentially two and two, maybe three and one. Two and two at best, three and one at best, two and after that, then you hit that Big Ten schedule. It's going to be difficult. Under six and a half wins, Nebraska. Minus 110. If Nebraska was to get six wins this year and get to a bowl game, that would be a massive step forward for this program. Something they can build on. I mean, that would be one of the best coaching jobs in the country. Based on the talent pool they have right now and unproven talent coming in. I mean, you can say what you want to say about Jeff Sims. Anybody check out Georgia Tech's win-loss record? Good player, but, you know, it's going to take a while in Lincoln. Take the under six and a half. Be sure and get over to DocSports.com. Get yourself hooked up uh, with a free $60. Link in the description below or a tab in the upper left-hand corner of the website. And you can get yourself uh, $60. Put it towards a early bird uh, package in football and get hooked up for 2024. There is a ton of free information over there. Free picks, videos, how to bets, all the things you need to know it, have in your arsenal to beat the book this year in football. Get over to Docs, check it out as we enter our 53rd year in business.